Good evening, Possibility War fans. It is the 16th of January, 2022, and tonight is our second session in Curse of the Gaia Bolga from the uh, Delphi Missions Rising Storm book. Um, and we're, we had a great deal of fun with it last week. Um, we're going to start with a new morning, and let's get things going. So, what do you guys remember happening from last week? Well, we managed to find the knight that we were looking for and get aboard the ship to uh, help her break the curse on the weapon she currently has. The long ship that wasn't a long ship. The, the long well, ship that's not a long ship, yeah. Well, <laughs> Okay. Galley. All right. Yeah, the galley. That that's exactly right. Called the Spindrift. And uh, and and what other hijinks ensued? Well, the equivalent of a bar fight <laughs> with the <laughs> with the sailors on board. Yeah. Just because we managed to find the ship and get on it doesn't mean they'll actually not pitch us off before they set sail. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in this particular case, they are under Queen Pella Ardenay's orders not to do so. So, anything else you guys want to throw in before we, we get, get on the way, underway? Oh. Okay. Wow, I, I can barely hear you guys at all. Um, and I mean... That's in general. I'm sorry, I was walking away from my computer when I said that. I, I don't remember anything at all anyway, so. <laughs> okay, so Ginger doesn't remember. What about, uh, Tyler wasn't here, so. Um, what about you, Chris? I don't remember what. Uh, you, you said you didn't remember anything else from last week? Oh, um, I, I was surprised. There's probably uh, more that I didn't just say. Oh, yeah. I think there was, actually. <laughs> I was like, we got a drone for the captain. The uh, captain's cabin has a, like, a magical enchantment that uh, uh, dampens all uh, special abilities. Oh, uh, we, we met the we met the Q, Q Collins uh, possessed uh, 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 avatar. <laughs> okay. Uh, then The spear. Yeah, that chick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, and, oh! And you, and, and and you mean Elrana? Yeah, Elrana of House Garrick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, I remember. Her. What What were your impressions of her? You need to lighten up. <laughs> okay, that's one way to put it. No other impressions. <laughs> yeah. But she has the angst that is, you know, her family you know, was it, you know, she that family, her friends have died. <laughs> uh, she's not to be an angsty. You character. should look on the bright side. Her Christmas card list just went down. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that ain't right. <laughs> that that's funny, so but it ain't right. You really have to reach to find the right. Side. Sometimes you really have to reach to find the bright side. E e okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, the evening passes in tonight, and uh, you find your accommodations there a little bit uh, on the chilly side, but compared to what you were just putting up with in uh, Santa Claus uh, Valley, basically, in England, um, uh, this is nothing. This is almost like a warm vacation on a tropical island compared to... Uh, compared to that. Um, and it's only been, what, two days, maybe three, since that, since... Uh, uh, this, uh, so we were knighted the day before we got assigned this, so right. it's now day two okay. of us, you know, being from that adventure. Well, there you go. There you go. So it's been two days. You've had no time to rest whatsoever, okay? So that kind of sucks for you guys, but at the same time, you know... Not much to be done about it. Okay. Um, let's see. So by morning time, you're hearing all kinds of, of shouts and yelling, but it sounds like 
it sounds like uh, Captain Skywise is giving orders, and his two executives are passing those orders down, and there are others on the deck that uh, are senior uh, and are are giving orders to specific uh, dwarves to, you know, get up the mainsail and, and you know, pull up the anchor and let's get moving. Mop the poop deck. And... Mop yep. The poop deck. yep. Don't poop on the mop deck. Um, and, uh, and so you, you start moving through, uh, basically kind of a, a channel that's not really all that wide. Uh, it's, it's a quarter mile wide. So the, the ship actually leaves the dock and just starts off right away toward, uh, Greenock and then makes the turn around to Rothsay and then past Largs and then out into the Firth of Clyde, which is, if I've got this correctly, is basically like a, uh, a lock almost. Uh, it, it's a way to help ships get out to sea without too much trouble. Okay. So, as the spindrift leaves the lands of the light around Glasgow, the skies fill with low, ominous clouds. The crew keeps the ship within sight of land, and the rocky cliffs look dark and foreboding. Trees twist in the cliffs, or on the cliffs, as though reaching in vain for the ship. Um, so you pass the, you're passing the Isle of, of Aaron, just as uh, you're probably getting around for breakfast and whatnot. But you can, you can feel the ship moving. And then when it breaks out into uh, into open waters, uh, you can see the the cliffs and the various things as you come out on deck. Now, oh, we 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 weren't on deck before. We were in the, the, that our our rooms were below deck. Yes, your rooms are below deck. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I I did not import all of the maps uh, uh for below deck because they're not really important enough to do that, and that's a lot of work. So, um, anyway, I gave you some, some basic description. Uh, do any of you have any, any game questions, any general description questions, or anything to ask anybody uh, on deck? Uh, do I see uh, da, 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 uh, Elaine, right? Uh, uh, Elrana. That's her name? Yes, Elrana, Elrana. is there, as a matter of she- fact. Let me go ahead and pull this over. Uh, Activate. Okay, so let me go ahead and... Okay, you're visible. Oh, not so much. And then Cret, not so much. Okay, so L, Rana, and Captain Skywise are over here. Um, they seem to have been chatting a little bit, but not much. Skywise seems very um, stoic, if you will. But then he, uh, let's see, how can I, I've forgotten how to do this. Uh, control, so up there. And, oh, no, that wasn't it. Well, that's okay. Captain Skywise makes his way up here. To uh, to do his captain thing. There we go. All right, and then and greet Alrana and ask her. Okay. good morning. Well, good morning. She says good morrow to you. But again, she doesn't seem very. How do I describe this? She she seems Is very she trying formal. to uh, be a little. Yes, and I made sure to say, uh, "Add sir, Elrana." I I didn't just say, "Yo, morning." <laughs> um, and, and and she she nods and says, did, "Good morrow to you." Hmm? I did greet her rather formally. She seems a rather formal person. Um, but uh, um, I would be terrified if I were a... her to warm up to anybody, lest I become. The focus of whatever curse she's under. That that was exactly what I was thinking. She's probably purposely staying distant to people, uh, so as not to kill them. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, Chris, what were you going to say? I was going to ask: Is she trying to stay away from people? 
people, or being a loaf, you know, stuff like that. She, she looks at you. Chatting with people, or is she keeping to herself? She she looks at you, and again, just try and hear this in, in a, a kind of a bold female voice. She is a warrior, after all. Um, uh, and when she goes to speak with you, she basically says, well, aren't you the rude one? I wasn't asking her. I was just looking. Just like, oh, wait a minute. Um, you were asking me? Just... Yeah. Oh, I, I apologize. Uh, I misunderstood. She's acting like that. Um, <laughs> right now, all that you can tell is that uh, she is very mission-oriented, if you will. She is trying to make certain that uh, uh, she keeps her eye on, on the ball if you will. And that's what it seems like to any of you who would uh who would ask. By the way, these uh these paddles over here, these kind of sticks if you will. Okay? Um those are for helping to raise the mast. So, uh raise the mast, that's Yeah, let me get out. That of would there. be the ship anchor, would it not? No. No, the anchor is is more towards the, the fore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then let me get out of their way, so that it, they could actually. Oh no! Do it, their job. it it's already up there. Um. Uh. You know, it doesn't make sense to leave those in there. So okay. So let's do this instead. Uh. These are only going to be there. Uh. When they need to be there. Otherwise, they are. Uh. They are taken out and stowed in an area or in in basically cubby holes around and between where they would normally go. So, yeah, don't worry about those. They're kind of modular, if you will. Um, so, I, I hadn't thought about that. Um, so, Peaches, you kind of got out of the way there. Chris, you're there. Uh, Dogfight, do you have anything to ask? Um, I, I was... Um, is there a crow's nest? Um... There are two. There is one here, okay, uh, on the aft mast, and then one on the fore mast. But of course, you have to be able to get up there. Wait the a minute. Mast is the problem, right? So, Claus, do you have anything while while you're waiting to load in? No. And dogfight. What were you asking or saying or whatever? I, I was asking about the, the crow nest, whichever one is the taller one. I was going to go up and acquaint myself with whoever was on the, uh, who, uh, whoever was on guard. Oh, the uh, at the higher one, that's going to be your foremast. At the front of the ship. Okay. So. Like I said, I just wanted to acquaint myself with him, say hi, what's up. Well, and right now, there's nobody yeah. in that crow's nest. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll cop a squat. Okay. Just keep an eye out, huh? Um, and yes, you do kind of freak the guys out uh, when you the the dwarves uh, when you when you get even more uh, uh, altitude. So as you're just kind of floating around. By the way, uh, the ropes that are around the masts those are going from the top of the mast down to their attachment points on the on the ship. So you may not want to get caught underneath those. You understand? I didn't plan the ropes, right? I know. I, you flew up there. I got okay. you. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> so Elrana does does ask uh, Chris and Peaches, and how did you sleep? Good. How had how did you? Very well. Thank you for asking, lady. And she looks at Chris. Not well, I'm afraid. My nights have been filled with nightmares. For many a day now. Perhaps if we can have this curse removed, for which I am thankful for your service, uh, it won't be long until I can sleep again and hopefully be able to see my sister without attempting to slay her. I hope so as well. <sighs> So, breakfast is in the captain's cabin. Again, he is, as you can see, already in command of his vessel. 
and taking us out of the channel. Or out to the channel, I should say. Uh-oh, somebody was making noise. Uh, let's see. Okay. I feel special. You did two meals in a row in the captain's cabin. <laughs> uh, you do realize that you will probably be several meals in a row in the captain's cabin. I'm just saying, it, you know. I watched Love Boat when I was a kid. It's a big it's, it's, it's thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said that you're basically up here? Yep. Okay. All right. So... Um, and after breakfast, if there's no other reason to be um, down and below, I'll be back there. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so... Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and pull this one over. Hopefully it doesn't take forever to load this time because it's already been activated and preloaded and everything like that. So for those of you who decide to eat breakfast... Uh, is there it's any, probably all of us. I probably, um, do any of you have anything that, uh, oh, go ahead and, uh, anything special that you're looking to do? Well, my character was going to, uh, Google, uh, guide Bulga. Okay. On her phone, as provided <laughs> we have connectivity. <laughs> and that was probably before we set out and before, before her battery is out of charge. Oh, okay. So, okay. So you wanted to do that before you got on the ship? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think you could probably do that on, on your way um, because not absolutely everything was uh, aisle pure or dominant. So... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you said it was a mix zone. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, there's no way to recharge my phone on the ship, but uh, I could read aloud some of the history that I downloaded yesterday. Oh, please. If if you've uh, the, Yeah, if if you've got some actual table. history to to uh to read, have at it. Uh well, it's a long article of uh, from the Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and I apologize, my Gaelic is awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, the Gai Bulag, meaning spear of mortal pain or death, or the gapped notch spear, or belly spear, was the name of the spear of Kuchulain, the use of the Ulster cycle of Irish mythology. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on, hold on a second. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really must interrupt because I have a Celtic background, and and I had to find out and made sure it's Kukulin. 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 <laughs> well, then, how do you spell uh, or pronounce the fact that it was given to him by his martial arts teacher, the warrior woman? Scathic. Scathic. And its technique was taught only to him. It was made from the bone of a sea monster, the Kiruid that had died while fighting another sea monster, the Kung Chin. Although some sources make it out to be simply a particularly deadly spear, others, notably the Book of Leinster, state that it could only be used under very specialized ritual conditions. The Gai Bulag had to be made ready for use on a stream and cast from the fork of the toes. It entered a man's body with a single wound like a javelin, then opened into 30 barbs. Ooh. Only cutting away the flesh could it be taken from that man's body. I, I kind of glance at, at the knight with this. Is any of this familiar? She, um, you're talking to Elrana, right? Elrana, was any of this similar or familiar? Um... All I've seen thus far is how deadly it can be, but I've not seen the 30 barbs uh, as as you've seen. Those may be for, well, the way magic goes, those may be specifically for 
uh, most hated enemies. I see. All right, well, to continue. In other versions of the legend, the spear had seven heads, each with seven barbs. Um, well, that one obviously isn't true. <laughs> no. So, yeah. <laughs> in the Teen no. Bow Colinage, uh, Colcane, uh, what was it again? Colcane? Colcane. Colin. Colin. Sorry. Colin. Colin received the spear after training with the great warrior mistress, Saka, again, in Alba. She taught him and his foster brother, Furadad, uh, everything the same, except she taught the guy Bulag feet only to Colclane. He later used it in single combat against his brother. They were fighting in a ford, and Furadad had the upper hand, and Colclane's charioteer leg floated the guy Bulag down the stream to his master, who cast it it into his brother's body, piercing the warrior's armor and coursing through the highways and byways of his body so that every single joint filled with barbs. Ooh. Uh, Faradad died soon after. On separate occasion, Cole Klain also killed his own son, Kalmia, with the spear. In both instances, it was used as a last resort. As once thrown, it proved invariably fatal. Goodness. Uh, let's see. Cole claims use of the guy Bulag in the Tain Bo Kalanij uh, exemplifies its deadliness and the gruesome condition in which it leaves its victims. This can be seen in the fact that after it is used, one must literally cut into the victim to retrieve it. This was the case in Cole claims slaying of his brother Faradad, and it is stated in Sian Carson's translation of the Tain. Sounds like a deadly, okay. deadly weapon. Then, yeah, then yeah. it cites a lot of uh, sources. Most of them are Gaelic and Irish. I apologize. Oh, don't. But uh, that's 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 what's left of our historical record. Um, and there might be some clues there for us to use or to try in order to break your curse, milady. She she looks at you and and her eyes are. She's attempting to withhold surprise or fear, uh, or a little bit of both, and her face kind of betrays her, her natural emotions uh, at that point. Um, we have heard about only the legend of, of what I know thus far, but it appears that Kukulin was a a real person on your Earth uh, yes. before we even came. Yes, he's a person of our our legend of our history. That Many is extraordinary. The, um, it's equally extraordinary to us that as all of these realms come down and change reality of Earth, it's like all of Earth's history. Showing up out of time and place. Either that or a case of the um, the reality that's overlaying ours is, is activating important um, important myths and legends of our day. I mean, um, if you take if you take um, if you take Cairo for example. It was it was never a, 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 a as as um, um, active and interesting as it is now, but because of the uh, fiction surrounding Cairo when uh, the when the Nile Empire came through, it it, it enhanced the, uh, the that image. So yeah, Kukulin was could have been a real person, but. It, it was it, it the uh, the Myth legend around him has become real. The lead, yeah, the legend that that were surrounding him once he, you know, once once he passed, uh, uh, have become real as opposed to just being, you know, expansive tales. Yes, it's as 
if our 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 legends are coming to life again. Okay, Ginger. No. Yes. I'm giving you a possibility for that research. Thank you. Uh, you know what? I huh. think I think Robert, I'm going to give you a bonus also because of of uh, what you know and what you've suggested thus far. Um, yeah. So, Bravo, Robert, that was really cool. Yeah. The the I I'm as the GM, I'm going to capitulate and admit right now, I did not do this research because I did not think that this was a real story. I thought it was something that was made up um by the author, uh let's see, what is his name? Ron Lundeen. Apparently he did no, his research. Him. Go ahead. No, Ku Kulin is a rear, is a, is a it was a is basically like kind of our one of our Paul Bunyans or uh, Hercules. Think like Hercules. So uh, Hercules, yeah. Uh, although Hercules is uh, Hercules is actually you know completely mythological. Uh, you know there 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 are for like Paul Bunyan. He's not forty feet tall. He wasn't forty feet tall. I don't know if his name was actually Paul Bunyan, but there was a big you know. Some big lumberjack guy who did a whole lot of good shit. Who influenced in the early days of America? Yeah. So okay, so and you're Johnny saying, Appleseed. yeah, Johnny Appleseed, yeah. But you're you're saying Ku Colin was was actually an individual who, whether influenced by others to to be told as a story or was the real deal, um, uh, is is something more akin to real than what we presently have. In the possibility wars, he's 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 one of those he's one of those uh, men who become legend uh, uh, in, in retelling since he died. Okay, all right. Yeah. If you've ever seen, um, if you've ever seen, uh, uh, what the hell is it? Um, Braveheart. You know, they okay. they even mentioned the fact that it, even in his time. Uh, uh, he was being mythologized as being ten feet tall and oh yeah, whatnot. So. Yeah, love that movie. Um, no matter how uh, how far out there it may be or how truthful it may be, I love that movie. So, but Great movie. Uh, total crap. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, thank you, by the way, for that research. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, so, put the Wikipedia link onto our Discord page, incidentally, just if you want to go back and read it, because I do such a hack job of pronouncing Gaelic. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to OBS and I'm going to shut off the Foundry window for just a moment. Um, oh, did okay? You haven't put it there yet. I did last last week. Oh, last week. Okay, so let's see. Uh, where is that? That's ah, downloads. There Gingergram. The there you night. go. So yeah. The Wikipedia article. The Wikipedia article. That that's something else. And I'll allow our uh, our viewers to get that so that they can research it themselves. Although that's not really. Hmm. Okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So getting back to this. All right. That one. So El Elrana, Lady Elrana, um, uh, is surprised by the research, and, and she goes to answer uh, Chris and explain um, the the research that we had was not that detailed. Uh, all I've seen thus far is the blade, and at this at this point, she kind of looks down at the table and has to swallow a couple of times. The blade tore a couple of a few of my closest allies apart. That's all I know. Uh, I did not see exactly how it was done. So I will be very happy to to take and study the information you have retrieved so that it may, may help us and I will see if the captain has a way to dispatch a message to uh, to my order to get them to help me out. But for your information, we are on our way to see Skathic, who uh, 
Or the ghost of Scathic. Or the ghost of Scathic, because how many centuries ago was that tale? Would have been at least ten centuries. Mm-hmm. A thousand years. Yes, ma'am. So, I, you know, in, in uh, stories like these, you can have uh, uh, people living millennia too. So, for all we know, the teacher might actually still be alive. Hmm. That could be interesting. Although, in truth, I hope not. For the guy in Bolga, maybe used to tear her apart as well if it recognizes her. Oh, I would say it's more of a connection to you. So, well, uh, yes, if, if you don't recognize her, then it that, probably won't activate. Is, that is a, a very good point. Sir Cross, and I hope for all the world that it is true. Well, there is another option. If you're afraid of that, we could perhaps blindfold you as you approach her. I don't believe that I would handle a blindfold all that well. Indeed, it may force me to strike out more. As you will. I, I was wondering, though, if the Spear takes its knowledge from your eyes. If you don't see her, perhaps well, you can at least converse with her. It could be from her mind. So if she knows she's, you know, dealing with the person she knows or and cares for, it might activate then. Well, it's a legend. There's usually loopholes or keys or, <laughs> or clues or something. So, uh, uh, we don't know the you, full curse, so we can't yeah, find that I mean, out. Uh, it, when you say I'm, that, Elrana it has been, she kind of dipped her head down. She's she's sad and she's thinking, but when you say there's some kind of a loophole, she looks up and actually has a grin on her face. So, yes, uh, and we're going to find it. <laughs> you're going to find her grin. No, we're going to find her loop that loophole, and we're going to solve this thing. I oh. think that grin shows that she thinks she's found the loophole. Uh, not necessarily. She uh, might. Oh, doggone it! I was hoping. Idea. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> or at least have an idea, maybe. Okay. She might have an idea. Has you know? Has something uh, come to you? Some thought that's given you hope, my lady? No, uh, Lady Gonzalez, just your word. That is all. Okay, let's see if that changed anything. Um, yes, it did. Okay, so I can keep records that way. All right. So, uh, anyway, uh, any other questions for her while all of you are taking in breakfast or walking around the ship or anything like that? Really? Uh, just a, a question, and it and it may be rude in private. So I say it softly to her. Do you would you said would you, you didn't get much sleep, and that your nightmares uh, that 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 you you seem to be plagued by nightmares. Are these nightmares of things that could be that the spear suggests, or is the spear telling you its long and dreadful history in your dreams? Ah. Is it telling you what might be, or is it telling you of what was? It shows me what was and what I have done since. Those are my dreams of late. Neither very comforting. No. Um, And that's why I appeared here at the ship alone. I do not have companions come with me at this point. You are at present my companions, and thus um, are in the greatest danger. The least, actually. You I are, don't know you from Adam. Exactly. <laughs> you are in the least danger. However, coming to know my plight like this may endear you to me, all of you, a little bit. And uh, yes, you're saying this protection might not last. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, lady, if it makes you feel any better, I don't like you. So. <laughs> uh. 
I, I, I roll my eyes very visibly uh, so that she can see me. <laughs> Sir Dogfight, I am afraid you may come to like me the most. <laughs> And uh, and she gives Dogfight a smile as well. She says, "Thank you for your effort, but I'm afraid your verbal sparring only causes me to like you more." Shall we retire yeah. to the rest of the vessel instead of being stuck mm -hmm. inside all day? I mean, I'm fine with being well, inside all day, nice, but... Should... And while the weather's nice, we probably should. I, for one, am enjoying the sight of the coast without a trace of snow. <laughs> 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 she says, without a trace of snow? Are, are you the ones who were involved with the recent business in England with the... Ah, uh, how do I put it? Uh, with the cold weather. And the Magister of Mages? Oh, yes. Oh. Well, fine piece of work you've done there. Very nice indeed. Thank you. So, you are indeed I, I... valiant folk. Pishah. <laughs> we, we aim, yeah, Pisha. Uh, we're big damn heroes. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, this is our our world, and we're fighting for it. That is, that is thanks enough. I and I fight beside you for mm -hmm. my world has, though it has not been destroyed, it may well be soon. If we can fight these High Lords here and either kick them off your world or, uh, or destroy them, perhaps we can gain your aid on our world to help it recover. And that is why I am here. Cool. Indeed, and we welcome your help. She bows her head, and then she stands up from her chair and, and uh, just walks out on deck. Yeah, and, and, and so do I. I'm going to find a sunbeam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. That's 100% for me. Come on, everybody's coming over. Yay! So if I preload the scene, it works a lot faster. That's a good thing. Um, okay, so uh, do you, uh, Dogfight, do you return to your perch? I do. Actually, okay. uh, if, uh, if, if, if they're offering, you know, if there's any in the offering, I'll, I'll take a, you know, a, a, a drink up there with me and just kind of make myself comfortable. Oh, sure. You can find uh, Grog in various points on the ship. Um, okay. Uh, you know, and, and the dwarves are like, well, this is for the voyage, so we might as well enjoy it. Uh, and then they have, you know, other areas, if any of you are interested in finding out how the cargo is kind of split up, they have other areas of the ship that are actually uh, roped off or netted off. Uh, and, and they explain this area is off limits. Uh, please don't go back there and take anything. Uh, this is part of of what we are hauling for those on the uh, on the uh, island, on the Isle of Sky. Um, but yeah, as you're getting up there, there's another dwarf who is uh, climbing up the ropes on the port side of the ship, the left side, um, and uh, and is kind of jealous because you're able to kind of just float back, you know, float up there without any problems. He's like, how are you able to do that, lad? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just started being able to, so I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> Perhaps you can teach me. Um, well, are you planning to fly an F-15 into a tank at any time in the near future? A what into a what? Ah, oh, lad, I think you've got yeah. a lot to tell me. 
<laughs> anyway, you probably get up there long before he does, um, at least a full minute ahead of time, because he's got to climb, unlike you. Um, mm. <laughs> loser. But uh, he he gets up there and uh, uh, starts looking about. Yeah. I won't interfere with his uh, his work. He's probably a better um, lookout than I am anyway. No. Well, he, he does get a scope out every so often and uh, and extends it so that he can uh, look. Uh, and he helps point out a few times some rocky shoals that uh, that the um, the ship needs to the the spindrift needs to uh, move around. Um, but I need you to make a find test for me, if you would please. And uh, let let me see yeah, something here. Activity. What's that? I said, sure, I'll do a useless activity. What? Uh, come on, pop open. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. I need to look and see something. If you if you shift and click... God bless me. Why does it keep making me look stupid like that? 30. Okay, Um. so roll another 20 for me. Um, so you've got 30 so far. Okay, so 35. Holy smokes. Huh? Yeah, you can count the wings on all the flies on the coast. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's it's a really good luck. thing. That Pure luck. Uh-huh. Hey. Um... Oh, you know what? No, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, don't give me a result yet. No, don't give me a result yet, um, okay. um, GM. Okay, that's okay, because um, I've got to get things time. rebooted again anyway. Because I'm spending a possibility. Oh, okay. Are you are you going to try to go for a uh, a, a glory on <laughs> a vision roll? <laughs> I, I'm I'm not going for a glory. We're not in a dramatic encounter. I'm not sure if you can get a glory if you're not in a dramatic encounter. However, I am shooting for uh, activating the uh, the law of enchantment. So. Oh, aha! Uh -huh. So you still have to roll item. sixty. So yeah. Okay, so that's thirty-five, forty-five, forty-nine. All right, and I have a, I have a possibility card. Um, so did you use a possibility for that? Sure. Yeah, I used a personal possibility for that. Okay. I, I'm, uh, I, and I have, I, I forgot how to get. Card. Oh, there it is, open hand. Uh, I, yeah, I have. Uh oh, somebody logged out. Connor, okay. So I've I've already reduced your possibilities, so don't reduce your possibilities anymore. Um, I, I already did. I had already counted it. Uh, <laughs> I'm at seven, uh, not eight. Or six. I'm at seven. No, because I I yeah you, I bumped you up from six you, to seven. Yeah, you you had. Oh, and then he must have came around and then bumped himself up by one for that possibility. Yeah, didn't. that's what I'm thinking. Um, okay. okay that's fine. I'll, I'll I'll let you guys know when I bump you on possibilities. Um, and then you know, because I've got these neat little controls on here now. But okay, so drama card. Um, just go ahead and click on the drama on that mind test, and let's see how well. it does. Uh, okay, go back up to your mind test card in the in the chat window. Go to the go to the line that says possibility oh, up hero drama. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you're at forty nine. If you click on that drama. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Um. Mm hmm. So that's uh. That was a. Oof. Yeah. Dog on. And... I'm also I'm also playing another card because I have my Cosm card that matters for this particular instance. There we go. Okay. All right. An alertness works. Let me pop that open real quick. Alertness, you notice an otherwise unseen item. Well, you can go ahead and take that back because you can you can do that with oh, your roll. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was the wrong guy. That was the wrong card. How do I take it back? Uh, that's a, okay. Hang on. Let me go to the... Let me go to the Destiny discard. And that was the card <laughs> your alertness. Okay, hold on. So let's see. I need to, let's see, return 
Returns all cards to their decks. That's not what I want to do. Okay, so let me get your deck open now. And I can... Okay, I'm just learning how to do this, so bear with me for a minute. Okay, so your alertness can be tossed back over here. Hello. I think I have to grab it by the word. Okay. There we go. All right. So your alertness is back in your hand. Okay. And so that's taken care of there. Um, true. Oh, true enchantment. Oh, what is this? Okay, this is your Cosm card. If the Law of Enchantment triggers, play this card to allow any item, regardless of Axiom, to benefit from the effect of magic. Oh, you suck. Uh, so let's see. You rolled 46 plus 5, so that's 51 plus 14. Uh, that's going to be 65. So, okay, so the Law of Enchantment. Hang on just a minute. I got to get out my aisle book. Okay. Up last week. What's that again? I looked this up last week. Yeah, that doesn't help me here. <laughs> I've got to know what it does. Okay, law of enchantment. Oh, I, I can it. No. Well, no, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Magic is so powerful and wild in Isle that it can imbue nearly any object in a time of crisis or discovery. In a time of crisis or discovery, weapons which strike the hide of dragons can become lightning rods for eldritch power. Shields that turn back a hail of arrows in a desperate battle may harden to near imperviousness, and a symbol of the gods used to terrorize a horde of the undead can touch the very essence of divinity. Okay, that gives some pretty specific uh, ideas. Um, are yeah, uh, I... I, I, I have one actually, and considering okay. that the I I actually wanted to do this on this, mm -hmm. but the fact that I got this roll on a fine check makes it even easier. Okay. Um. It, when I got up there, I put my goggles down. 